Um, thank you, everybody. For, thank you uh, for Ben. Ben, can you confirm that you are seeing my screen and hearing me clearly? I can confirm both. <laughs> thank you, sir. All righty, let's jump right in. Um, today is our, our May edition of our Oracle Analytics Live. So thank you again for everyone for attending. Um, this is just a brief glance at our safe harbor statement stating that what's shown today is subject to change under Oracle's uh, discretion. And just some house cleaning um, or housekeeping items rather. Um, during today's call, we'll have a, an extended session for answering Q&A. So please do use the Q&A box as this will help us just keep track of all the questions that are answered. So do not use the chat, but please use the, the Q&A. And today's agenda is a uh, very action packed as you'll see, very demo heavy. So you'll see a lot of the product in action. Um, you'll get an executive update from our VP, Joey Fitz. Um, and then learn about the analytics platform, the art of what's possible, followed by some data storytelling demos um, and a lot more for today. So let's really just jump right in. Um, I wanna introduce Joey Fitz, who's our Vice President of Product Strategy for Oracle Analytics. Um, so Joey, um, over to you. Thanks a lot, Brendan. And thank you everybody for being here today. We appreciate you taking the time and your busy schedule to spend it with us. Uh, it's always a jam packed, uh, event for these these Oracle Analytics lives, and you're gonna you're gonna uh, have your time well accounted for and respected as it's a fast paced uh, run through of a lot of new capabilities and features that we hope uh, provide you success on your analytics journey. So I'll quickly just cover a few things and then uh, get you right to the action. So Brendan, thank you. If you haven't seen uh, what we call an Oracle Live, TK Anon, who leads our our, our analytics business um, had an Oracle Live on May 3rd, and it's available on demand for you to watch whenever you would like. Just go to the, the link that is shown here. It is a uh, brief 23 minutes, but it is packed with um, our strategic narrative straight from the mouth of TK, uh, as well as uh, a well-produced um, uh, presentation that has a lot of, of demos, uh, has a lot of content, and I think is very clear in articulating what we think the value of Oracle Analytics is and how it's differentiated in the market and how it can help you to achieve success. So I highly, highly recommend uh, checking this out. It's a, it's a, it's a time-effective way to uh, truly understand what is the Oracle Analytics strategy and how can it help you. Awesome. And uh, I'll, I'll launch a quick poll um, after Joey. Um regarding um, if you've watched the, the OA Live so far. So let me just put this up for a minute and then we'll jump right back in. So let us know, I'll keep this poll up for about a minute or so if you've already watched the Oracle Analytics Live with TK. But uh, back to you, Joy. Okay, great. I also want to share with you uh, some new research from, uh, from Nucleus Research. We were uh, honored uh, to be characterized as a leader we're positioned as a leader uh, for the first time in this nucleus research. This is the result of uh, really the success of our customers. Uh, with, we have uh, a handful of customers who submitted their, their stories of what they've been able to achieve, uh, which is how we measure our success as well. And uh, there'll be some case studies that will be produced from this, but uh, thanks to the success they were able to, to achieve uh, Oracle Analytics, uh, benefited as being recognized as a leader. So we're very happy about this. Additionally, on the next slide, you may have seen our sports analytics partnerships. Uh, these are extremely exciting. You know, one of the, the objectives we have is to, to make the world more aware of, of what Oracle Cloud has to offer and, and, and Oracle Analytics as a part of that. So these partnerships, such as with Red Bull Racing, as you see here, uh, Formula One is a, a very exciting sport that's very popular. It's okay, you can go to the next one. And Premier League, uh, we announced uh, our partnership with Premier League. Very excited about this. You'll see uh, information on, on TVs powered by, it's called Match Insights, powered by, by Oracle Cloud. And I think we have a couple of examples of those. Um, we issued a press release uh, discussing three of the initial new insights that we'll bring as a part of Match Insights. This will show up on, on every Premier League uh, match that you see around the world, which this sport is more viewed than any other in the world. About 3.2 billion people uh, watch these matches. So um, 
there's there's uh, insights that we'll provide on on how momentum has changed throughout the the course of the of the game, as well as uh, positioning on the field, um, and then probability and how that changes with different uh, events throughout the course of the game as well. So we're very excited about about these insights uh, powered by you know Oracle Analytics and some of our machine learning generated uh, analytics that will surface through Oracle Cloud and and put on your TV screen in real time with the game. So exciting stuff. Hope you enjoy it and. Uh, Back to you, Ben. Awesome. Thank you, Joy. Um, yeah, I absolutely agree. It's very exciting with Premier League. And well, this isn't a, a poll question. I'm just curious. Let me know uh, which Premier League club you're most excited about to learn some insights for next upcoming season. Personally, I'd be interested uh, to know the probability with uh, Liverpool's goalkeeper scoring that game-winning header last last week and how likely that's about to happen again. So let us know in the chat which your favorite uh, Premier League team is. But now we're going to transition over to Ben, who's going to cover our product strategy. Um, but before we do so, I'm going to launch the next poll. Um, let us know if you've used Oracle Analytics or you are using Oracle Analytics. So let me <laughs> launch this right now. I saw your answer, Philip. <laughs> and, uh, and now over to you, Ben. Perfect. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ben. I'm Senior Director of Product Strategy for Oracle Analytics. And today we are going to get a little bit uh, some update on product strategy. So we can go to the next one. So first I wanted to say thank you to all our Oracle Analytics leaders. Uh, as you know, we have thousands and thousands of customers and, and millions of users using Oracle Analytics Cloud. Uh, but out of all this huge community, we have a set of Oracle Analytics leaders, which are the top innovator from US, India, Asia Pacific, Africa, Europe, helping us every day to make the product better. So they provide product feedback, they provide ideas, they ask us um, to develop new use case, new POC with them, and to try to innovate and make analytics successful in their company. So I know today we have some of them. I saw Roy Amato from Emblem Health, um, I saw a few other people from HSBC. So again, thank you very much for being part of this community. Uh, next one. Uh, today, we are going to focus on the blue stack. The blue stack here, it's Oracle Analytics. So we have three different products, Oracle Analytics Cloud, Oracle Analytics Server, and Fusion Analytics Warehouse, which is uh, trending uh, with a lot of companies today. You have to know also that uh, most of our customers are using Oracle Analytics with autonomous data warehouse, more than 50% of our customers, in fact. They are using also Oracle Analytics on top of uh, ERP Cloud, HCM Cloud, SEM Cloud, NetSuite, and more. And then finally, the big trend is to use Oracle Analytics with Digital Assistant and also Apex, which is a low-code application. So again, if you are using Oracle Analytics Cloud, you have a lot of different AI, data, and analytics services that you can use in, in the next generation of Oracle Cloud. Next slide. Oracle Analytics Cloud is not just a data visualization tool. You have data preparation, you have uh, data flow, you have um, intelligent data enrichment, machine learning, you have also augmented analytic uh, working with natural language processing, natural language generation. Uh, we have also different things like a mobile uh, enable app. Today we have Reggie, which is going to show you a demonstration of a new mobile app, which is skyrocketing. And then what you have to know compared to other products like uh, Power BI, Tableau, and others, Oracle Analytics Cloud is self-patching self-tuning, and most importantly, self-securing. So you don't have to have an army of IT people to manage it. Uh, next slide. We have the new version of Oracle Analytics Cloud. The latest version is offering a lot of new features. So again, the new mobile app is there. You have also multi-table, multi-source, uh, data set, you can join multiple data sources from Google BigQuery, Amazon Redshift with Oracle Autonomous Data Warehouse. We have also uh, two new connectors, uh, JDBC connectivity. You can connect using the JDBC driver to all your legacy systems. We have also a connector for Google BigQuery, brand new. Uh, we have also now support to EPM IR key 
subject area higher key, FCCS higher keys. So if you are using an higher key, now it's going to be native. You will be able to go into a pivot table or a bar chart and drill down directly into this higher key. We have also a top new things that you can see here on the presentation. It's data quality insight, where when you are loading a query from a specific database, you will have now quality insight generated by AI directly at the top of the column to tell you that, for example, the value New York City from this column is representing, for example, 25% of the value for the same column or for the same dimension or attribute. Uh, then we are going also to have high resolution printing in data visualization. You can basically print in, uh, in PDF, PowerPoint, in high resolution, which is also something big that a lot of people requested. Next slide. Uh, and then finally, uh, and Brandon, if you can move to the next slide. Yeah, thank you. And then finally, during the Oracle Live, you saw that TK Anand, which is our senior VP of analytics, presented the new Redwood design that we are going to release this year. This design, you have it here. You will see at the left panel, you have new icons. It's more fine-tuned. The resolution is better. At the top, it will not be a blue bar as before, but now it's going to be a dark redwood bar. You will have also different things in the menu. The um, design is going also to allow faster analytics. You will have a widescreen integration. So you can see here the image is taking more space than before. So again, this redwood design is going to be amazing. Stay tuned, it's coming this year, and I think a lot of people uh, are going to love it. So I think back to you, Brendan. Thanks. Super. Thank you so much, Ben. Um, great quick update. And now we're going to pass it over to our colleague, Barry Monster from the product marketing team, who's going to cover our Oracle Analytics platform. So over to you, Barry. Thanks, Brendan. So I'm going to just cover a little bit here, but uh, my name is Barry Mostert. I'm with the uh, product marketing group for Oracle Analytics. Uh, so let's go next slide. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the wider analytics platform, because we're not just playing with Oracle Analytics Cloud on its own. With OCI, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, we have a lot more services that can feed into that wider thing. So if we look at the very left of this deck, we're looking at this um, all sources of data that we can bring in. And we have 30 plus native connectors built in. And as Ben said, if there's any other thing that's not there, JDBC can allow us to connect to a, a load of other sources as well. So no data left behind. And we can bring in, and one of the misconceptions is that Oracle's is for Oracle, right? So we only work on Oracle apps and so forth. That is just simply not true. It's, we are very open to all the data sources, including JDBC. And as you connect to all those data sources, you really need to bring that data together um, with data integration. And you have a multitude of options around there as well as to um, how you're gonna bring that in also within the OCI platform of services. So we're all integrated. And of course, we have the ADW uh, right here in the center. Again, auto tuning, auto um, patching and securing so that you don't require DBAs to uh, administrate this, which means this really puts the things like data marts into the hands of business who can then have their own data marts and model and bring in data as they need without having to worry about IT requests to do so. So now you can connect to all your data sources bring that data into your own sort of financial or marketing or HR models right here. And then you can analyze that information with the analytics cloud, or uh, as you can see, some of the stuff we'll be showing you today, also via the new mobile app, which you'll see a little later. And the key is to go right to the very end. And now we can say, you know, we have something for all roles within the all employees, all types of users, whether you're an analyst or you're just a report consumer, if you're a citizen data scientist or a data scientist, there is something for everybody. And you can connect to any of those interfaces and bring the data you need. Even if you're a developer, there are coding interfaces and there are non-coding interfaces for you to do things like machine learning, something for everybody. You don't need separate tools for each. Next slide, please. And just looking at the waves of um, the, the industry's trends within analytics and BI over the last few years, we started in this governed analytics space. And this is really uh, centralized IT that pre-build reports, control things and push them out to the population of users. And those were like parameterized dashboards, pixel perfect reports, and they were built on a semantic layer that was managed. Um, 
but subsequently, you know, business took things into their own hands and needed a, a more of a pool style of getting information. And that created the self-service analytics wave, the second wave, where you know things like Tableau type tools that created this space, uh, really hands-on interactive data preparation and visualization, storytelling uh, created there. Now, the thing with Oracle Analytics, we didn't choose one or the other. We have a great governed analytics capability as well as self-service, and it's all built on a unified platform. So regardless of whether you get a governed report from IT or you build it yourself, you're going to get the same numbers. And that's the critical difference. And then the future, the next wave we're looking at is this augmented analytics. And that's where we're all going to become more data driven in our decision process. And this is where we start to incorporate machine learning and AI, one click advanced analytics. Uh, natural language, so you can query your data with natural queries, like uh, show me revenue and discount by region and uh, product type, and you'll get your answers. Um, we'll show you some of that today as well. But that's really where we're aiming for. And all of this is built in uh, in a unified platform. Next slide, please. So what I'm going to do next is um, show you a little bit of, of the art of the possible. So if I'll share my screen here, uh, just to give you an idea, of what can be done. And so if you can see my screen, what I'll do is I'll say, this is your kind of standard stuff um, dashboard where you have your metrics along the top, everything interactive and you know everything clickable, you can right click, you can drill, you can do things. Um, but you know, I wanna take you a little bit out of your kind of understanding of what is just a traditional dashboard. You can of course do these. Um, here's another one, a little bit more interesting. Um, where we have spark lines to show some metrics and trends, but here we have the ability now to add forecasts simply by having these uh, little forecasts lines here. So we can have predictive analytics already created with one click onto you know, what's revenue gonna look like next month, the trend line showing how income by month is trending. We can get really customizable. So here we can start to really change the look and feel and add interactivity. So you can really get a little creative with the way things look and feel. And with this dashboard, you can just click through it. This customer or um, uh, de decided to go with kind of a purple look and feel. Um, and you can do that. You know, you have full control of your dashboards and things. So again, here is a dark background. So if your company has specific look and feel with your internet, you can really match that. Again, matching those same nice KPI cards at the top with some traditional pipe bar charts along with some kind of uh, natural language, kind of, uh, sorry, machine learning clustering and trends over here. Now, what's different here is we started to add natural language generation. So this is now explaining the chart automatically based on that information. In fact, natural language is considered just another chart type within the Oracle Lytics Cloud. And here I'm going to show it to you. So this is just building a basic revenue report. I've got some trends going on. All I need to do is simply say, let's go and duplicate this visualization. And as you can see, out of the multitude of different chart types that are now contextually relevant for this data, I can say, let's go with a narrative. And very quickly, it'll create that narrative for me. And if I want to see a little more information, I'm just going to drag it to the side. And here we go all the narrative automatically generated to explain those numbers. And here we can even choose the verbosity. I can bring it down in terms of level of detail. I can change it from a trend to a breakdown style of narrative, or I can change language. I could literally say, let me talk to it in French. And if you speak French, you know, bang, there it is. Uh, a little bit of a French lesson for you. Uh, moving on again, we have dark theme. So we do have other kind of types again with um, the Sankey kind of things, natural language generation. And now we want to look a little bit more interesting into uh, using something that's a little different within the spatial analytics. Now, spatial analytics has always been a difficult thing to do for business users, but really, now it's really in the hands of business. This is a supermarket, and we can really start to click on these kind of timelines and see how many people were in the supermarket at these times. And as I click through, I can see that the, the cafe here is kind of busy, and you can see the checkout area is kind of busy in the morning. It empties out, but this is really allowing somebody to see how they can introduce um, social distancing policies around the different times of the supermarket, something that would be very difficult to see in any other kind of pie charts or pivot tables or so forth, and very easy to do here in Analytics Cloud. If you wanted to create an infographic, you can have your infographic created uh, right here. It's interactive. I've set it up. You can see these things here. You can click on these. They're just like normal bar charts. I can drill and use as filters and do everything. But once it's complete, I can say, let's save that out as a file. 
and I can choose PDF. And then once that's done, I'll have it already open here for us. Here is my infographic, completely created and ready for publication in my blog or within my website. As I scroll down, you can see this is a classic PDF infographic. So here's another kind of capability that you can start to use with the latest uh, analytics cloud. And if you don't like wine, well, you can do it with Irish whiskey, just the same. My last one I'm gonna show you is this one here. This is actually the Twitter monitoring that we have set up. And the reason I chose this one is because, you know, we have a, a bunch of different graphics already built in, but if there's a graphic type that or visualization that is not in there, you can literally bring in just about anything you want because we have an open capability of plugging in D3 graphics. And that's what this is. It's fully interactive and it's showing who, which Twitter handles have been tweeting around our space. And in fact, if I look around here somewhere, I'll probably even find me, there I am. Uh, obviously I need to get onto Twitter a little more and increase my size, but you can start to play with these. And I'm sure Ben, ben is here, he's also sitting there. So we do have the ability to play around and interact. So that's what I'm gonna show you for now. Um, I'll hand it back off to the guys. Awesome, thank you, Barry. Um, let me share my screen back and we'll jump back in. So now I'll be, um, I'll be providing a, a live demo kind of in the, the art of the storytelling with Oracle Analytics. Um, I'm Brendan Doyle, I'm a, a senior product manager on the Oracle Analytics team, but let me pull my, my screen over. Um, ben, can you confirm that you are seeing now my OAC instance? Uh, yes, no, yes, correct. Fantastic. Um, and before I jump in as well, I just want to reiterate, if there are any questions, um, or product questions or any questions in general, please use the, the Q&A as that's where we'll be using um, to answer anything that comes up during today's call. But um, as Joey mentioned at the start of the call, um, Oracle is now a, a cloud uh, platform um, vendor for Red Bull Racing. And that's kind of the story I want to align with this. So what we're looking at now is just a quick overview of the data storytelling capabilities that you can do within Oracle Analytics. And this data that we're looking at is being pulled in from the sensors that the F1 Formula One cars um, create. And right now we're looking at an actual car with the, the Oracle logo on it, um, leveraging the ability to do um, image backgrounds and custom map layers within Oracle Analytics. So all I did was bring in a simple JPEG image and loaded it into Oracle Analytics, drew these circles on top of it and matched my data um, up to where it needs to be. Now I can understand the, the tire pressure left and right, front and back within our, our Formula One cars. I also have some just quick KPIs like you're seeing as Barry was mentioning, but the ability to do KPIs around the performance of the vehicle. So the average pit time um, and where they need to improve there, the amount of fuel left, so it helps the team know when they need to come back to the pit to fill back up. And also that, that network strength for the driver um, so they can relay this information back to their team. Let me jump to a, a different example. Um, this one is a, is a really cool one leveraging and focusing on um, Red Bull's other driver, Alex Alban, and really looking at his, his race suit as it contains a lot of biometric um, sensors and is pulling in that biometric data to analyze things like his heart rate, his oxygen levels, his reaction uh, time, and as well as the, the G-force that's on the driver. So it's interesting to see that, I'll highlight this area to see while the, the average um, reaction time is, is increasing, you'll also see across the board where the oxygen levels are increasing, uh, the heart rate of the, the driver is increasing, and then the G-force is a, about to be increasing as well. So a lot of pressure and stress is being put on the driver during these um, these races. So just a cool way to, to really tell that story um, by leveraging the actual driver's suit itself. Um, jumping to a next example, um, I can also just quickly, um, let me open up my screen for, for more visibility. But um, with this one, this is looking at the repair cost when it comes to each vehicle. Um, in this one case in particular, the specific parts being the wheel of these vehicles. So we can see that it looked during the, the April timeframe, um, the wheel was costing for repair up $14,000. So just getting a good glimpse of the different sections of the vehicle itself, but also you're seeing in the yellow, this forecasted ARIMA. And what this was done was simply by right clicking on the visualization itself, 
you can go to add statistics and then add any of these. In this case, it was uh, a forecast being added, but just that ability to uh, further tell that data story, um, in this case being around the cost specifics. And the last one that I'll show regarding the Red Bull racing will be around the, the tire degradation. And this is obviously very important um, in racing is they're moving at such high speeds and the, the tire temperature um, towards the, the ground is degrading against the wheels. So they need to understand, the drivers and their team as well need to understand when they switch out these tires so we can easily expand any of these visualizations to get a clearer view and a much closer view. And what we'll see is at 100%, that's obviously a brand new fresh tire was put on the vehicle, but it looks after about 10 laps, it starts to degrade and it's time to, time to put on new tires or make a pit stop. So it's interesting to see that um, over time, they continue to degrade further and further. And pulling in a, a different example as well, we'll even see that how much the, the temperature of the outdoor um, track race brings to that degradation of those tires as well. So the hotter it gets, um, the more friction towards the, the wheel on the ground, the, the sooner uh, they'll need to replace those tires. So just really cool insights that um, are made every, every single race um, and are really the make or break it for these racers when it comes to, to winning or losing or even placing. So um, this was just a, a very quick example of some of the data storytelling that can be done in Oracle Analytics. But what I also want to share um, is our new Oracle Analytics onboarding experience. So if you're new to the, the product um, or using Oracle Analytics or looking just to, to expand that much further, um, we have our, our brand new onboarding tour. Um, and I'll be sure to share the link in the, the chat as well. But essentially what this is, is no matter your, your level of uh, access to the data, be it a user um, who consumes reports and, and filters through, or somebody that's actually creating reports, this is kind of aimed to be that one-stop shop um, for you to get onboarded into the tool. So just making sure there's best practices around signing in, always linking back to further documentation if there's uh, more questions to find what you're looking for. But also you'll, you'll learn some of the best practices in kind of a, a 15 minutes to getting started around connecting to your data, um, visualizing your data and all the connections that are supported. Um, uh, so here are some of the, the best practices around data preparation, which will be shown during our, our 6.0 demo. And then um, just more around, as I mentioned, the ability to do data visualization, um, leveraging things like our one-click explain feature um, to leverage the machine learning within Oracle Analytics, and then also collaborating and sharing back to your colleagues all the reports and insights that you are finding and how to do so securely. And then the last slide being simply um, kind of a home for all of the key resources that our community will need. So if you have questions, our documentation is always a great place to start. We also have our Oracle Analytics library, which is our home for a lot of data visualization plugins, um, pre-built examples and tutorials. And then our, our community being Cloud Customer Connect. If you have ideas for enhancements around the product, we'd love to hear them. So please share them to the Idea Lab. And all of the, the, the tutorials on each release features are added to our YouTube channel as well. Um, so that's just a, a quick overview of what the onboarding experience is. Um, and I'll jump back now to the, the demonstrate or the, uh, the presentation. Um, as I mentioned, yep, the, the, I'll share the, the link into the chat, but it is oracle.com slash go to OA getting started um, to really get this onboarding tour. But now we're gonna uh, transition to a new demo being our new Oracle mobile application. And Reggie Hansborough will take over to lead this demo. So over to you, Reggie. Thank you, Brendan. Let me uh, share my screen here. Okay, are you guys able to see my device? Yes. Yep, wonderful. Um, so thank you everyone for joining us here today. Really, really excited to share with you the new Oracle Analytics mobile application. It's something that uh, my team and I have been working on for quite some time. We're really thrilled to be able to share it with everyone, um, what we've been, you know, having the lab cooking for these last uh, little while. Um, just give a little bit of background. So our team are, are the folks behind uh, Day by Day and Synopsis. So mobile is our jam. It's something we're really, really passionate about. And so let's dive right into what we have here. Um, so the first thing uh, that I want you to, you know, kind of take note of from a, um, from a visual perspective is that any user who has used OAC Home previously, they want you to feel immediately home in the application itself. So we have a few sections that you'll be used to seeing. So we have your recents, which is a combination of all your recent artifacts that you've interacted with, 
your favorites, projects, and because my user is an author in this particular environment, your data sets as well, and then as well as your classic content. This is where things like your answers, your, your publisher reports, all that type of content will go in this area. So we've got the kind of the familiar look and feel, but let's dive into one of our projects and see what that looks like on the device. So I'm going to open up here our UFO versus Bigfoot project. And the first thing that you'll notice is that we have a stream of cards. Now, if I were to look at this same uh, project on my desktop environment, obviously I've got a much different layout. So what we had to do, one of the challenges for the application was to adapt your normal project layout that you have in your desktop environment when you have your nice, you know, 27 inch monitor, or if you're like myself, you've got three of them, um, adapt that to a mobile context. So what we've done is we've taken the data bearing elements, essentially the visualizations from your project, and we put them in a simple list of, uh, a simple card string. We have some more tricks. So I'm gonna open up one of these charts. One of the things that was really important to us from an interactivity perspective when we, when we developed this application, um, you'll hear me talk about, you know, emphasizing the native capabilities often here, um, because the, the key with native versus, um, you know, more your web-based technologies is that it allows us a great deal of performance power. You know, you're walking around today with devices in your pocket that have, you know, more power from a CPU and a GPU perspective than, you know, laptops had even, you know, five years ago. We want to really leverage that. Whereas some other products might have the mobile uh, context will be more of a painting style. We encourage you to touch your data and to play with it because the expectation is since we have a touch based environment on our phone that we want you to touch your data and we want you to interact with it. So all of our charts are fully interactable. They are not, uh, you know, paintings to just simply be admired. You're supposed to reach in and touch the data. We've got a few party tricks that you might have noticed here as I'm kind of panning and zooming around the, the visualization. Up at the top, we have what my team affectionately refers to as the mini map. Um, this is a basically a quick seat bar that allows me to go quickly back and forth within the visualization. Um, in addition, something as simple as, you know, your tool tip um, also has a party trick. I can undock that, and you'll see I have accessory handles there that are available. This allows me to step through my data for all adjacent points of intersection. This is particularly useful when you're dealing with a very dense chart where there might be a lot of data on screen at one time. Additionally, from a usability perspective, once again, thinking about mobile and the ability to perform analysis very quickly, you want to provide multiple paths to success for users when interacting with their data. So in my bottom toolbar here, I'm going to hit my little accessory, and you'll see that what I'm showing here are previews of all the other visualizations that I have on the same canvas within this project. And I can very, very quickly change between my charts because one of the very common use cases that we have for performing analysis is having two visualizations side by side. Obviously, when on my phone, it becomes a bit more challenging, so we want to provide a mechanism for accomplishing that same type of interaction. Additionally, once again, because we're on your phone and we need to put the information that might be most critical up to the forefront for you, we have this uh, little icon here. You see this little insights icon. For those of you that are um, coming to us from previously using day by day or synopsis, this will be familiar to you. We refer to this as the chart insights. It provides just some basic uh, KPI and metrics for all the measures that are in play for this particular visualization. So you can see I've got, you know, top five, bottom five, some counts, um, my, my quartiles, et cetera. Um, in addition, in the upper right-hand corner, you'll notice I've got this little paragraph icon. Uh, this actually represents the narration, NLG. So all of our visualizations, um, you know, support NLG natively, as was mentioned previously. And we want to bring that to the forefront once again, because as I'm on my mobile device, one of the ways I might be able to interact with my data could just be to take a look at the summary. Okay, so that's kind of the basic interaction model. So I want to show something that is, you know, we feel like is kind of a, a gameplay loop, if you will, to borrow a gaming metaphor, that is really handy for a mobile context. So I'm going to pop over to my email here where uh, my boss has sent me a spreadsheet that he would like me to take a look at. So imagine that um, you are at the airport, you might be about to board, and you don't have a lot of time, and much less all you have handy with you is, is, is your phone. So I'm going to take a look at the spreadsheet here. Um, so what I've done is I've opened that spreadsheet, and now this is being uploaded to OAC via the Oracle um, Analytics mobile application um, for purposes of me to be able to perform some analysis. Okay, so hopefully I'm not getting any live demo uh, gremlins here. 
and I'm getting live demo for a month. Let's try that again. My apologies. This is what happens when you do live demos. That's better. Okay, what we have here is a, uh, a light version of the preparatory stage you're used to seeing when you upload a spreadsheet to, to OAC. So in this case, I've got my uh, measures and my dimensions broken out for me. All this looks good. I'm going to save this. Then I'm going to say continue the creation flow. So once this project is uploaded to my environment, now I'm in an exploration experience. So what we have here are all of my columns within my data are represented uh, via bubbles in this case. I can filter that for only measures, my dimensions, or my dates. If the uh, bubble metaphor is a little bit too frenetic for you, in the upper right-hand corner, you'll notice we have an icon, or I can change to a simple list, where once again, I can still do all my filtering that I was doing before, as well as have search space available for me in case I have an extremely large data set that I want to fill in. But I like the bubble, so we're gonna go with bubbles. So let me select a few columns here. We're gonna look at revenue, profit, category, region, uh, that's good. so let's go. So now what we have is a, a series of suggested visualizations based on the shape of my data and the columns that I'm seeing. So I'm gonna do a couple of them. Swipe rights here, put things that look good to me. Looks good, looks good. Category, sure, region. Now yeah, we'll, we'll skip that one, just for the sake of completeness. All right, so we've got this. I'm gonna give this a name. Now we're uploading this project that we generated via this exploration experience to OAC. And now I'm inside my freshly created project and I've never left my device. So I've received the data set from a colleague, in this case it was a spreadsheet. I've, I've uploaded that data, potentially changing column types and that sort of thing, doing some light prep work. I was able to do some light exploration of that data in order to select some charts that were applicable in this particular case. And I've been able to create a, a, an OAC project that now I can share back out to the boss and let him know that we don't need to panic. Okay, uh, the last thing I wanna show you is something that we're particularly happy with. Um, it was something that, that um, you know, came by virtue of our desire to reduce the overall friction uh, that's involved whenever we want to interact with any of our, our, our data and our analytics. So, you know, we want to eventually get to the point where we no longer have to be dependent upon the device or even dependent upon your desktop or laptop, et cetera. And in the modern world, uh, a lot of what we do, especially um, in, the, in, the, in the quarantine days that we're just getting out of, is uh, you know doing, uh, I don't know about you all, but I do a lot of listening to podcasts, especially while I'm uh, doing food prep. So one of the things that we've done while leveraging the underlying um, NLG capabilities of OAC is we've created the notion of the analytics podcast at the project level. So I'm going to long press here on, on my projects. Oops. And you can see here, I'm going to say, listen to podcasts. Death count percent vascular. The data represents the death count for a total of 129 killers. What stands out in this situation is that a few killers. So what you see here is I essentially have a playlist based on the visualizations that are within my project. And we've intelligently selected what is, uh, what is available and what's applicable based on the shape of your data, once again, and generated NLGs uh, in the form of a podcast. Uh, and because we're a native application on your phone, you have the ability, oops, I don't want to see my other notifications. I had to turn off Do Not Disturb if I wanted the audio to play. I have the um, media controls present in my notification shade. If I was on iOS, my media controls would be present on my lock screen as well. Once again, with the idea being that we want to remove the restrictions that previously made interacting with your data more. So there's a lot more I would love to show you, but I've been given a strict time limit. So with that said, I will hand it back to Brent. Awesome. Thank you so much, Reggie. That's a fantastic demo. Um, I'm going to launch a, a quick sec or third poll um, regarding the OA mobile applications. So let me just launch this right now. One second. But let us know if you're, you're planning to use the new Oracle Analytics mobile application, both in the App Store for iPhone users and the Google Play Store for Android users.
And while that follows up, I'm going to introduce our, our next speaker, who will be Philippe Lyons, um, who's calling in from France to provide this new features of Oracle Analytics Cloud. So over to you, Philippe. Hello, Brendan. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, indeed. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. So I'm going to share my screen. I am Philippe. You can hear from my voice that I am French. Uh, let me briefly, can you see my screen? Yes, sir. I am a product manager with Oracle Analytics, and I've been working on this for several years now, and I'm pretty enthusiastic with this product, and I want to share a few minutes with you on some of the new features that just got delivered in OAC, latest release of OAC. So this slide is just a overview of some of the features. I'm not going to demo this all, all of this to you in 10 minutes. There is a playlist out there that you're welcome to check. So if you look at the, uh, the URL at the bottom, and I'll post this in the chat after we're done, you will have quick videos demoing all of these uh, uh, features. Uh, so this is obviously GA, so you feel free to go and check it out. Meanwhile, I will just focus on a few that I think are very interesting, and you may have heard some of it already in the presentation. I'll talk about the ones that I have highlighted here in blue, and I'll actually start from the, the end, from backward. I'll start with uh, graph analytics, and I'll talk about maps, and then hierarchical columns, and then uh, data quality ins insights and multi-table data sets. I'll try to fit this into the next 10 minutes, so let's go quick. So um, graph a visualization, network visualization, and graph analytics. These are two different things. So as part of uh, Oracle Analytics, now we have the ability to visualize graph, graph data. So what you see here is a visualization that allows to, you, you see the table in the middle, which is simply a source and destination and number of base passengers in this case. And the visualization on the right represent this as a network visualization. So this is available with several options. You can do all sorts of things here. It's actually something you can download in the Oracle Analytics uh, library. It's public and it will allow you to visualize a lot of uh, network vertices and edges. And by the way, if you were using this 6.0, brings a new version of this, which is a lot more powerful. So feel free to refresh the version of the plugin if you've used it already. So this is pretty cool and it's very visual and it can be very dense, but what is most important in Oracle Analytics 6 is this little node here. So I've switched to a data flow. A data flow is where I, as a user, can prepare or sequence transformations on my data. And you can see here that there is a node on my data flow that says graph analytics. And what that node allows me to do is to run, let's say, basic graph analytics calculations. So clustering, calculating shortest path between two uh, uh, nodes, ranking page ranking nodes or doing calculating subgraphs. So these are pretty complex analytics that require a lot of uh, processing. And they are now at my fingertips here in my data flow. So basically what it comes down for me to do is give me your, my source column. So in this case, source is source and destination is destination. Do I have a weight column? In this case, uh, distance or time or number of passengers. And since I'm asking for shortest path, I might as well just provide a beginning and end to my path, a source and a destination. I want to go from SFH to ASR, which are two station names. That's it. That's as much as it takes me. And uh, now I'm just saving my data flow. Like uh, if you may be used to, you can simply save that flow and then it runs. And by the way, it leverages the capability of the Oracle database behind the scenes. So power is not the problem. And it generates a data set. So now, let me go back to my original network visualization. And what I'm going to do now is, in addition to that visualization that I have, I will join my shortest path calculation with it. So this is the data set that you see here. It's just simply joined to my original source because we have the same source and the same destination. So it's easy to join. And there I can simply drag that information. Well, let me actually build a table first. So these are the results of the calculation we did. So we can see that we started from SFH at the top and then we landing into ASR at the bottom. Now, how is this? That's a lot of steps to go from one to the other one, but I want to see it visually. So I can simply drag some, some color, for instance, in my edges here. 
And here I can see my shortest path being represented on my graph directly. So this is very visual, very useful for me to identify how things are connected together in many different contextual or business contexts. I can do uh, sub-networks as well. What that is, is a different calculation that shows me not a shortest path, but it shows me for a given path, for a given node. So you see that red dot right there in the middle of the screen. It's very small right there. I have asked the system, so I went and built a data flow, just like I showed you a minute ago, and I've asked the system, what are the nodes that are in a range of one hop, one connection from this node? And so we can see here, I've highlighted them, all the one, all the one hops nodes that are away, one step away from this red, uh, whatever that, that uh, station I had selected. And if I click on two nodes, now you can see a little bit more uh, nodes that are in that range. And if I keep going on, I'll see the three nodes and the four nodes and so on. So business-wise, this is very useful in many contexts, but technically to achieve this, it actually literally takes less than a minute to compute this out of your data. And it takes 30 seconds to visualize it the way that you're showing here. Right? right there. So this is a pretty powerful capability that is now available as part of 6.0. This is, let me call it basic graph analytics. Oracle provides uh, advanced analytics capabilities in the database, but OEC makes this basic capability already available at your fingertips. For time's sake, let me move on to another one of the 6.0 new features. And one of them is the capability of overlaying maps on top of each other, even when they have nothing in common. So here's my list of restaurants of uh, the organization that I'm working with. And there I see some Latin, latitude and longitude and I have addresses of restaurants and I can represent this very easily in the map. But I would like to overlay this with another list of uh, data, which is interstates, which is what you see here. So I have a highway line geometry and a route number. Now you can see that these two data sets they are separated by a straight line, meaning there is nothing that joins them together. There is no field that make me give me the opportunity to join restaurants with highways. Uh, this is not in my data. However, I'd like to see if there is any relationship between the fact that the restaurant is located nearby a highway or not. So I can very easily achieve this with Oracle Analytics. I'm just going to show a map with my highways. So here's, here are my highways. Let me put a color so we can recognize this. So these are all my highways. And now I'm just going to create an other layer. So add a layer on the map so we can do this already. But this time I'm going to just bring data from this data set which has no join with the highways and the visualization which will overlay these two layers. So here's the lats and longs of my restaurants and I can see all of it in a single map. And if I bring revenue now, I see the ones that have a large revenue or smaller revenue. And if I select, I will select the range. It will select both the layers. So that could be useful for me to understand what's going on and how things connect to each other, even though I have no data relationship. And if I go on, I can even zoom and understand business-wise what's making sense and why restaurants that are located near highways have a higher revenue. That's very pretty visible here. Pretty cool feature here, but I'm just looking at time, so I'm going to fast forward. Another quick demo that I want to share with you is actually on my Oracle Analytics instance. I'm going to create a data set here quickly. And I create a data set in 6.0. So I'm moving on to a new feature here. I can certainly connect to a database. So I'm just going to connect to my own uh, ADW database, and I'm going to see all the schemas here. and the, the new capability, which is really a strong capability in 6.0 that we're making is, I can now, let me go to SH, which is the sales history database that comes with a, a schema that comes with uh, every database. I'm going to select multiple tables here and drag them to build not a data set, but a model in my OAC uh, uh, project. So this is introspecting the joints that may exist in the database and dragging across all these tables in my OAC. And I'll give it another 10 seconds. And if it doesn't join, if it doesn't come up, I'll just show you the one that I had prepared right there, which that's what you will see as a result. And this has prepared the joints that exist in the database 
prod to prod to cost and sales to product. All these joints have defaulted, and now I can see this model as a single data set in OAC. This is a single data set, and I can join it with other data sets. I think I'm done with my time, but um, uh, that's too bad because uh, the last demo I wanted to show you is that we can now use hierarchical columns in OAC just like we can in answers, OAC TV. So I can expand and collect my columns, but that will be for the next call, I guess. Uh, thank you, Brendan. I'll send it back to you. Perfect. Thank you, Philippe. And um, I will I will note that um, all of our uh, presenters today will be staying on um, towards the end of the call to answer any and all questions. So I highly encourage everyone to, to share your questions in the QA section of Zoom as um, we'll have a lot of time to spend to, to answer those. But with our last demo, um, we're going to be covering Oracle Fusion HCM analytics. And Manisha Gupta will be providing this demo. So over to you, Manisha. Thank you so much, Brendan. Um, hi, everyone. So I'm going to quickly walk you through with a few things that we are doing and what keeps us excited here. So, it, um, okay, first, just to ground this demo a little bit, uh, what we're trying to achieve with FAW or Fusion Analytics Warehouse, um, it's available for ERP as well as HCM, is enabling you to get to your business questions faster, right? And a few things that we do, and I'm going to demo you quickly, so we're going to rush fast, is uh, getting access to data because answers are everywhere, not just in Fusion sources. So we um, enable, the product enables you to get data from Fusion sources as well as external sources. And we'll look into a few sources like surveys and benchmarks, et cetera. Uh, the next thing that was important for most of our customers was security. So we have integrated security wherein you don't have to create users or even out of the box job roles from Fusion. We get that as is from the source system. But then you also ask us to be able to customize it and create more roles uh, for the op for the analytical users in your organization. So that's available today with for custom security. That was the latest release that came out. And finally, answers are in the data. Uh, and you know some of these questions are implicit within a specific module. So for example, I want to talk about headcount and attrition, which comes from my core HR, or I want to talk about my GL entry, which comes from GL. So it's module specific, it's done, it allows you to go beyond OTBI, which is anyways answering operational answers, but much beyond and more, more complex answers from the same modules. Then we went across modules. So you can actually uh, answer questions like, am I recruiting a high performer? And is there staying, are they staying long enough, right? So across modules within the same function, then we went across functions. Now you can answer questions like, headcount by employee or revenue per employee, uh, sorry, profit by employee or revenue by employee, et cetera, and much more deeper there. And as we keep answering these questions, we've got to start tapping into the cool functionalities that the team shows today, uh, you know, from Philip to Barry to uh, uh, Reggie. So we are tapping into all those capabilities, all the cool stuff and the powerful stuff um, and using that to answer these questions. So some of the examples are like text analytics. You can tap into uh, a lot of unstructured data that comes with the surveys um, to understand the sentiments of your employees or the themes, et cetera. We can also tap into natural language processing to just ask a question, you know, talk to me about attrition analysis or convert charts into text for some people who prefer text better or predictions. So this journey will continue and I'm gonna quickly show you how we have proceeded on this journey, okay? So let me just close this one. All right, so this is what FAW looks like when you log into it. Um, there's a lot of information available here. I'm gonna flip through it very fast um, and we can go in details as and when you need in a later session. So first step is um, this console allows you to configure it yourself, um, go much deeper into many of the aspects I covered. Right? So I'm gonna flip through. Beyond the data that we got from our cloud sources, you can bring in external data. You can leverage all these capabilities to get the data. Here are some examples of data sets from surveys, et cetera, that is available, but you can tap into connections to external sources, all the connectors that we talked about today. Few other things to look into is once I get the data, I want to extend that data. So the semantic model or the RPD as some of us call it, uh, you can use uh, this wizard-like tool to extend that so you get captured the external data into the data that we already bring in the product. Again, extends the value of the product much better. I'll quickly show you some other aspects like security, right? So if you look into security, 
we get all the users. You don't have to recreate these users. These users came directly from the Fusion sources, but I can now create new groups, actually add more users. Most of us are some consultants who are working on some of the analytics projects. So create those users directly in here, figure out like whatever the security model is, whatever makes you comfortable. All these are now available here by user, by assignment, by application, et cetera. Finally, all the data in security and you know, connectors in, what we really wanna do is build some analysis, right? So I'm gonna walk you through with some of the analysis, um, really more, a little bit more focused on the recruit to hire, the whole journey. And um, all this analysis have been built using the subject areas, which are coming directly from Fusion HCM Cloud, extended with some of the external data. So very quickly, let's take a look. First thing we launched was HCM code. These are the core answers. Um, a lot, uh, you'll see the subject area is very rich. It's, it's different than uh, the subject areas that you see in OTBI. One single subject area here, you can keep scoring actually, I've not even opened up all the facts. 130 plus facts. Just with one such powerful subject area, you can answer tons of questions. And you will see like, I, I could keep building more and more. So here, this is coming out of the box, you see, um, um, a good understanding of your hires, of your termination. I can see a detailed understanding of the compare ratio of the high performance within the organization. And I can also see some of the termination reasons. Now, what normally happens is when I'm looking at termination reasons, when people fill in their service, they might uh, fill in their, uh, when we capture this information, it says personal reasons, not really actionable, right? So what I could do next is I could actually tap into the exit service where specific questions have been designed by HR to get a detailed understanding of it. Uh, here, not only can I look into the sentiments, but also tap into like specific things. Like it seems like um, the progression, professional growth uh, progression was not as effective as we might have wanted it for our employees and start becoming more actionable. Finally, I could bring in um, unstructured data. This is coming from Pulse surveys, like the annual surveys uh, many of the companies do to really look deeper into what might be the sentiment of the employees impacting that acquisition, right? So I can, again, filter down, you have the parent-child relationship, uh, you've tokenized a few things. So all this huge plethora of, you know, text, which would probably take, you know, hours to read and understand. Now with one click of a button, I can make it actionable for myself and make decisions. From headcount um, and attrition analysis, the next question that often comes up is, how is the how is my workforce moving within the company? So this subject area is actually my favorite. It's called workforce gains and losses. Super powerful and quite different. What we have done here is we have taken into account every movement that has happened within the assignment. So any change, whether it was an event that you captured in HCM Cloud or not, any change in any assignment, whether a manager change, a department change, business unit change, grade change, location, any change in an assignment essentially is tracked. And what it enables you to do is understand, you know, different kinds of movements which are happening at different levels within the organization. Um, helps you promote a few things, helps you retain employees, helps you uh, promote internal mobility. And I'll show you one cool effect of doing it by jobs um, in a second, right? So first, Takeaway, subject area is super powerful. Um, this transformation will take years and it actually took us a long time to look at the, at the assignment grain itself step-by-step step and capture every little change that's happening in the assignment um, available now just with a drag and drop for you, right? So um, here's a quick overview. We'll keep walking you through. You can quickly see what, is, what are the kind of gains that you're having by different dimensions, gains that you your organization had by job family or over a period of time, by location, by categories, et cetera. Similarly, I can take a deeper look at the losses I made. You know, why did people leave my organization and what did they leave for? Was it location or was it a job family? Was it a promotion? And finally, this is again, super cool, where if you just look at gains and losses from a job grade perspective, you can create a sans key like this, where different, potential career paths or what could be a, you know, different directions a director of contract could take um, or a, a service representative could take, which different directions have they moved in so far. The richer the data, of course, the more depth you get in the sand skin, you will see what the path could look like. So again, from attrition to headcount to internal mobility, our next step was recruiting. Another, yet another subject area. Uh, again, I've just opened up these subject areas. You can just take a look at it. This could take six, seven different subject areas. So our goal was without any really, um, 
focusing on learning too much, uh, start answering the questions faster. A lot more details. In one subject area, again, you have all details about requisitions, applications, job offers, the whole life story of how requisitions uh, recruitment needs to work. I'm going to keep flipping to show you some examples. This one focuses a lot more on openings and the requisitions. Then you can focus a little bit deeper on the applications. Um, what kind of applicants are you getting? Are you kind of getting the right quality of applicants, et cetera? And more importantly here, um, this is an analysis on further details on the applicants, you know, where are they coming from? What is the diversity of these applicants? Because we also want to drive the DNI initiatives across our companies at every business process. Um, and then finally, here is the sources. Um, one of the key things about sources is understanding which source is helping you actually hire a high performer. That way you can impact your budgets and allocate your budget. So if uh, this data is a little trivial in the pod I'm demoing you from, but if, you, if for example, if, if it tells you that agency referrals is pretty high or external career sites is pretty high, you know that this is the source where you need to fund it better next year as you plan. Just finally, a few things. Um, we have hired, we have retained, we have recruited pretty well. Um, we have gotten a bunch of data and extended this for survey data. Eventually, the end goal of all this is high performance from the company and the employees, right? So now in the le latest release, we got information uh, from the performance goals and check-ins modules. And the, and the key thing, which is very powerful is we've also gotten the performance documents, enabling you to do sentiment analysis on that. Right. And that's a feature I would very confidently, I can say, I haven't seen it anywhere in the industry yet. Most of the analysis is done primarily based on the rankings, one to five or one to seven or you know one to three, whatever we choose for our companies. But really the power is in the sentiment analysis there. Uh, what I leave you with is uh, whether you're looking at uh, activity or operational and impact aspect of performance possible with the drag and drop, you can keep looking at it. Uh, going from performance management to check-ins, how engaged are they, how often are they talking to their managers? Is that impacting their attrition or their performance? We can take a look there. And Manisha, um, in the, the interest of time, I think we need to jump to the Q&A as well. Okay, uh, cool. Yeah, sure. And then the last thing is basically performance and goals. So lots of, lots of information here. And with that, I'm going to end. Thanks a lot, Brendan. Thank Brandon. you so much, Manisha. Fantastic. Okay, let's uh, jump to the Q&A really quickly. One thing I will add is um, we have about 10 days left in our um, our goal to push for the customer's choice, which is Gardner's review program. So if you are willing, I'll launch one last, our second last poll, um, if you're willing to, to share a quick um, Oracle Analytics review. Um, then let me launch that. I'll keep it up for about a second or so. And then um, I will, we will jump right into Q&A. So let me get there. I'll keep this up and then I'll also just let uh, score our, um, I'll launch our last one in a moment. We can start Q&A and I'll, I'll uh, launch the, the last question. Perfect. But ben, would Thank you like to moderate Q&A? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Uh, so if anybody has a question, again, please put it in the Q&A section, not the chat because we cannot record them. I'm going to start right away. We have a question from Arti Vineshwari. Um, the question is, demo is excellent. Can you please show some business use case? So uh, I think, um, uh, Barry, it was during your demo. Uh, I think maybe you can answer what you can show in the next session. And Barry, you might be on mute. I am on mute and struggling to get my machine back, but I'm here. Um, what was the question again? <laughs> so the question is the demo that you show was excellent, but can you please show some business use case in the future? Oh yeah, so um, we can do that, absolutely. But I think it's for the future. The difficulty with showing business use cases is they take a little longer in terms of time. But what I would suggest is if you go to our um, YouTube channel, there are a bunch of demos already created with business use cases and you can definitely see them there right now if you need. I can put that link onto the chat too, by the way, I'll do that. Perfect. Uh, we have also a question, I think it's for Brandon uh, from Yemi Onigobde. Are you going to share the recording? Yes, indeed. Um, everyone will receive a follow-up email and the recording will be included there. So you'll have it in a 24, 48 hour um, turnaround. Perfect. Uh, we have a question which is maybe for uh, Brett from Moshka Gross. The question is, if you put the DV on a dashboard, action links are not working. So action links on a DV on a dashboard is not working. Is this on the roadmap to be fixed, uh, Brett? 
Yeah, and basically this is similar to the kind of embedding behavior because you're, you're really containing a part of a DV canvas in uh, uh, your, your project or your homepage or your dashboard. And um, we are looking at some ways to enable additional functionality. Kind of the key thing we're thinking through is what does it do? Does it take over the whole screen? What does it mean to move from, from that action? But yeah, we're, we're looking at that and um, we will have some news on that in, a, in several months. Perfect. Uh, there is a question on uh, mobile analytics and it's for Revy. So the question is from, um, oops, sorry, I, I missed that one. Okay, from uh, Michel Zima. Is it plan to make this new analytic mobile app available also for Oracle Analytics server? Oh, so basically on-prem? Yes. So yeah, so let me, um, let me give a bit of a disclaimer there. The, the trick with on-prem as it relates to our application specifically is because we so heavily uh, leverage native capabilities. Um, we want to be always on the latest and greatest. And so one of the benefits of being on OAC is that it's constantly being updated. And so additional functionality that arrives in OAC, we can then have that matriculated into mobile apps. So when we get to an on-prem environment, obviously then we're subjected to, you know, individual enterprises having, you know, their own change control processes. And I've been there, um, you know, in healthcare in a previous life. So I can only really imagine, well, what it's like these days with the additional regulations and stuff like that, if you want to do a patch or do a deployment or do an upgrade. So that's really kind of like the, the main challenge in that regard. Um, but the, that, that's a long way to say that, yes, we have something on the roadmap for on-prem. Uh, don't have any timelines I can share at this point, but obviously on-prem is still a huge part of the customer portfolio and we are definitely going to be serving that part of the portfolio as well. Perfect. Uh, I have a question also for uh, Manisha. So Manisha, it's a question from Satya Sandar Shedari. Uh, Oracle Journeys, which has been introduced in HCM Cloud, uh, how does Fusion Analytic HCM play around with this journey? Great question. Well, Journeys is a wrapper on top of a few things that Oracle HCM Cloud provides. So we def, uh, why don't we talk offline on what specific journeys you're looking at? Uh, our goal definitely is to provide coverage for the right business processes for you there. Perfect. And there is also another question, Manisha, because you are speaking, I'm going to ask you again, uh, from Anil Mendapara, what are the differences between FAW and OTBI? Good, good <laughs> That's question. That's a great question. We should start and end with that every time. Uh, well, okay. So in your company, in each of our companies, right, there's different people who need analytics. And I would say sometimes the question is exactly the same tell me more about attrition or tell me more about GL, but the complexity and the depth of the question changes, right? So if I'm asking a day-to-day -day person who's running your day-to-day -day operations, the complexity is normally less, scope is less, OTBI is the perfect source for it. Do remember, OTBI impacts your real-time databases on which your transactional systems are running. So if you start doing your, tell me the last five years of history and the next two years of predictions on OTBI, mm -hmm, not the right answer. Uh, can it do it? Well, architecturally, there's no stick in the stand which says at this point OTBI stops running. It's really more, it's not architect in that way. Don't, don't use it for the wrong reasons. FAW answers the questions beyond that. So from tell me what attrition happened last week or last quarter or maybe last three quarters to tell me what happened across my organization in the last five years. You're talking about external data sources, you're talking about scenario modeling, you're talking about complexity and the scope of ask increased. FAW has a warehouse behind the scenes. So absolutely use it. And I will also say FAW is actually leveraging not just the autonomous warehouse, but it's leveraging all the capabilities we talked about you know, with OSC. OSC is the platform that surfaces up these answers. So continue your journey beyond OTBI. If they're sister concerns, guys, no one replaces each other. That's the key thing to take away. Perfect. Um, <laughs> perfect. We have a question for Brett. Uh, Brett, it's a question for uh, from Anil. Mendapara, I can see many new features are available in OAC, but lagging behind on OAS platform. Um, so do you know, Brett, when these features are going to be available for OAS? Yeah, we'll continue our current pattern. Uh, essentially, we're release releasing the on-premises product uh, about once a year. And so um, it just happens to be these features came in, you know, in this calendar year after we had 5.9 for uh, OAS release that we'll continue that pattern. So, you know, I think you can expect to see these on-premises uh, in the next release. Perfect. Um, Reggie, we have a question from Wayne Van Sloo. 
Uh, in mobile app, I cannot seem to see maps. They all render as a table. Um, can you tell a little bit more? Sure. So what I suspect is happening there is you probably have some custom layers in your maps. And in the V1 version of the um, mobile app that we have, you know, we just released a couple weeks ago, um, we do not have support for custom map layers. Um, we actually have a pretty exhaustive list of um, uh, kind of various compatibility gotchas. We're actually in the midst of working with the doc team to make kind of an FAQ to get that published so it's socialized. So I suspect that's what the issue is, but unless we did a, you know, kind of a, a formal, you know, debugging session, I wouldn't be able to definitively say. Um, it, when you, whenever you see a table, basically what's happening is that's kind of a fallback solution. So essentially we've looked at your visualization, in this case, a map, maybe perhaps with a custom layer, and we've decided that we can't render that natively the way we would want to. So we fall back to a table in that particular case. Um, there's several workarounds that, that we can do. And actually, I, you know, it's probably best to, you know, go through those offline because I don't want to derail the rest of the, uh, the conversation. But um, the TLDR in that case is that more support is coming. And we will be publishing an FAQ very, very shortly to kind of, you know, that's very, um, very verbose and granular on what um, bits are supported and what are not from a native, a native perspective. Perfect. Uh, we have a question from Pravin Reddy uh, Mekala. This is for Philip. Uh, Philip, is there a way we can use the presentation variable on the DB project? And it's a recurring question from a, from a lot of users. This is a pro this is a topic we're working on. So this will be a part of uh, OEC in the future release. However, in the meantime, you can use a a plugin that works uh, provides a workaround for this. It's called variable plugin in the Oracle Analytics library. Perfect. Uh, Brandon, uh, we are going to do like two or three quick questions yeah. on your side. Uh, let's go. So Ganesh uh, Nivdanj asks, is there any free course or platform to learn this and also do hands-on training for Oracle Analytics? Perfect. Um, and I'll answer that one. I also see Alejandra uh, Chakan's question regarding the wanting to learn Oracle Analytics with formal uh, certificates. So I'll kind of hit both of those right now. Um, we have two free Udemy courses um, between the two, focusing on the self-service aspect, and then one more on the machine learning and AI within Oracle Analytics. And regarding the certification um, part of the question as well, um, we're working on a, a certification um, course that'll be added to the Oracle University, but I'll drop both the links um, to those re respective questions so that you can access the completely free Udemy course as well. Perfect. Uh, we have also a question from Mancash. Uh, this is for Reggie. On mobile demo presentation is strictly portrait mode. How does it look like in landscape mode? Oh, okay. So yes, we, um, well, first let me say we support all different form factors um, and, you know, you can't uh, see my, my desk here, but I've got devices that probably only like four people have. I've got Surface Duo. I've got actually my daily drivers, the Galaxy Z Fold. Um, you know, we support many different device types, including um, different orientations. So when you're in a visualization, um, you have the option to, you know, go landscape. Um, if you're on the home page when you're in mobile, that is portrait only. Um, but when you're actually in a visualization, then we support all different orientations. And then if you are on a tablet or a non-standard device, that's something that's multi multi screen or a foldable, then we have some other tricks of our sleeve in that case. Um, I won't spoil them for you. If you happen, if you happen to be one of the, the five people that bought a, uh, one of these uh, foldables or you know, first-gen multi-screen devices like myself, um, we've got some special tricks in, in case for the, those few users out there that are like that. Excellent. Uh, we have a question from Johnny Jitendra. This is for Philip. Are all the ML AI services in the data flow also available in the analytic desktop version? The answer is yes. They are. <laughs> okay, that's it, <laughs> it's quick. That's it. <laughs> okay, yeah. good. Um, we have another question and maybe this is for Brett. Can you bring, and it's for, uh, from Roy Amato. Can you bring in data from HCM report publisher into OAC 6? Um, so you could, can you bring in publisher reports into OAC 6? Um, I don't actually know for sure. I don't know, Philippe, do you know if you can bring in a publisher report as a data source? You can probably extract from publisher and bring as a data source, that for yeah, sure. We have to extract it, yeah. 
or you can bring the logical SQL of, so the metadata behind that publisher report is a query, which can itself serve as a data, a data set. But yeah, that's probably an easier approach uh, or going yeah. to OTBI or something like that. Yeah. Perfect. So still for Brett, uh, cool from Shetan uh, Kenya, could we join two different data sets in OAC? Yeah, so uh, Philippe demonstrated the new multi-table data sets, which is a powerful way to control the joins within a set of tables that are logically related. But once you have a multi-table data set, like typically with a star schema, you can still blend those together in the normal project blending experience um, in OAC. And we'll be making continual improvements in that space to make those types of scenarios easier with future things such as uh, local subject areas and a lot of cool things coming down the pipe. Perfect. I saw one for Barry uh, from Annabelle Suarez. In which cases can I use the open classic home? Is it better to use this option for creating dashboard, Barry? Yeah, so there's a couple from Annabelle on this subject about whether we use the new DV interface or whether we go with the classic analytics home. And as I described at the very beginning, I talked about governed analytics and self-service analytics. Now, that's exactly what the difference is between a classic home and the DV home. One supports the centralized construction and pushing of information, pre-built reports, parameterized reports that govern analytics. That is your use case for classic home. The self-servicing where business users come in and connect themselves, pull things in, mix their own Excel sheets or do that kind of um, enrichment and visualizations themselves, you should use the DV home. There's not a clear cut case of, you know, we need to pick up front this one or that one. Um, it really comes down to how you implement in your organization, your use case, but there is a specific use for both. They don't disappear. One's not going to consume the other. They are both different and both needed. Perfect. We have a question from uh, Nilesh Baldi. Uh, uh, current, for Manisha, currently we have our major enterprise application in Oracle Fusion application using Oracle Analytics Cloud for analytics and Oracle BIP reporting capabilities for native reporting. What I try to understand is the value uh, Oracle Fusion Analytics Warehouse can provide when we are doing our major development in OAC using ADW. It seems the Oracle Fusion Warehouse possibly reduce the development life cycle. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, uh, spot on, Nilesh. Um, it, it does, right? So uh, what so there's two ways of developing analytical uh, insights. So each of us can do it for our own company in which you have to do the whole ETL. Right? So extract, it seems like you've already started doing it with OSC. So extract and, and get the data. But beyond that, answer those questions, uh, the business questions. FAW, our goal is to um, reduce the work that you need to you know, invest in standard questions or what we call the best practices, right? And, Let's just say 70-30 rule. 70% 70 of the answers are mostly common across different companies and 30% are unique. So you can reduce that 70% work. You don't have to do it yourself. FAW will provide it for you. And then plus the extensions we talked about, you can actually customize it to suit your needs. So yes, it it should reduce the development life cycle unless you choose to be 100% custom. And every answer is my own answer, which hopefully is not the case. Perfect. Uh, we have a question from Anil uh, Mendapara, and maybe uh, Barry, you can answer it. I would like to follow up. Uh, I would like to do a follow up session to integrate SAP on premise ERP with OAC 6.0 to check the capabilities of OAC with SAP data. All right. So the first thing here is we don't have SAP connectors today as standard built in as native. Um, so that means the option there is to really extract the SAP information into the ADW and the diagram, as I said, and that's um, self-managing, self-securing. So you're not creating another enterprise data warehouse. It's really a data mart that is self-managed without any DBAs. Bring the data in there and put OAC on top of that. And essentially you create a specific function, functional data mart for analytics. And that's the way to do it with an SAP instance. Perfect. Uh, we have a question from Manoj Pandey. Uh, can we implement MUD in OAS on Unix server? Uh, Philippe, do you want to take it or I take it? The, the one part that I'm not uh, familiar with is Unix server. Is there a difference between Unix and... Uh, I, I think the answer is yes, but I'm, uh, I'd uh, defer to you, Ben or Brad, if you have a specific... Um, I, I it should work on yeah. Unix, right? 
Yeah, I think it should be the same. Uh, yeah. Now we can redirect to Alan. Brett, what do you think? Uh, Mud, uh, multiple user development in, in OIS, normally it should work if it's Unix or uh, Windows, right? Yeah, I don't, um, you know, the, the um, admin tool itself for RPDs is, is a Windows tool at the moment. Um, but yeah, I don't see anything different with uh, Unix in the general case. Um, but I haven't tried it, mostly Linux. But okay. the good news is the mm -hmm. new capabilities are coming soon that will uh, make that even easier. Yeah, we'll, we'll have a lot better uh, experience for multi-user development when the, yes. uh, the web-based tool is available. Yeah. Perfect. Two questions for Regi. Uh, will one from Joel Asha? Will project created in the mobile app be visible in Oracle Analytics Cloud? If so, will it be responsive? Yes. So the project you create for mobile app um, when you go to the homepage on the web, you will see it present, and it will um, appear and uh, basically it'll be responsive, but it'll appear to say a simple kind of flow layout. Um, and then obviously you're you know free to edit it at that point just because it's it's it is a DB project. Perfect. And a second question this time from Wayne uh, Van Sluz. I think it's for the mobile app also. Can the app work in disconnected mode? In disconnected mode. Um, Offline. Yeah, the short answer is no. <laughs> um, okay. There is um, there is quite a bit of you know, like all modern applications, there's quite a bit of caching that takes place um, where, you know, you might have an existing, um, let's say if I had a project that I opened in the existing Canvas, all the visualizations were downloaded. I would be able to open those visualizations and cycle through them if I'd already had the project open, even if I put my device in the airplane mode. As soon as I do a swipe to refresh or try to change a filter, then obviously, um, you know, the, the bottom kind of falls out. So, you know, the answer is, it is actually not designed to be used in disconnected fashion. Um, there are, like I said, use cases where things are heavily cached so that you will get the sensation depending on how far you want to bang up against those guardrails of what you can do. Um, you still might be able to you know, perform some analysis. So just by virtue of not having a network connection, we don't like kick you to the login page or something like that, for example. But you won't be, you'll be very, very limited in what you'll actually be able to do from an interactivity perspective. Perfect. Uh, we have a question from uh, Billy Otieno. Um, and it's for you, Brett. So, hi, it's Sami from Kenya. Uh, is there a way to extract a list of users with the analysis project they are assigned in the OAC interface? Yeah, so for the project metadata right now, the only thing you can really do is look at them through the inspect tab and see the list of users. Um, we do have a roadmap to enable some of these capabilities to be accessible via API. Um, and then we also have uh, some work that we're doing with the data catalog team to help with uh, understanding kind of uh, the graph of users and things like that, but nothing to announce uh, today. Okay. Uh, we have a question maybe from Philippe, for Philippe from Manoj Pande. I, my team, want a demo internal on DVD and DV in OAS. Uh, let me know what can be done. We can help you with that for sure. Yes. So Perfect. maybe Ben uh, yeah, or Brendan, if you can help connect with Manoj. Yeah. Uh, Brendan, one question from Andre Tyler, which is one of our top Oracle Analytic leaders uh, from HSBC in UK. How do you add animation in a project? Uh, Barry or Brendan, each yeah. add one in their demo. Yeah, um, it's surprisingly easy. It's I think it's just a, a lesser known opportunity to, to expand on that data storytelling. But all it is is the same as bringing in a custom image. Um, like you're bringing in a JPEG, you would just simply bring in a, a GIF file and that'll allow you to have those animated uh, uh, GIFs in there. So definitely leverage it to, to the full extent because it really brings in that data storytelling aspect. Perfect. Uh, there is a question from Pravin Redi Mekala. I will take that one. Can we make a data connection to uh, Microsoft Azure through DV? So uh, you have two different of things. You can connect right now Microsoft Azure SQL. We have also a direct uh, pipeline. You know, there is a, a partnership between Microsoft and Oracle. Um, so it's really, really fast. Uh, now, if you are speaking about Microsoft Azure Synapse, it's on the roadmap for the next 12 months. And usually it's going to come really, really quick. So yes, both are, are on the roadmap. Uh, we have a question for Brett. Where can I create dashboard prompt in the project? And it's from Annabelle Suarez. 
Yeah, today you can't directly uh, in the core out of the box experience create uh, prompts on uh, a project. Um, you know what right now you can still use a dashboard for for prompts. Uh, and then we have uh, some work as Philippe kind of referred to to um, add the kind of variables type of infrastructure to the product and then we expect to see some improvements when those come in. Uh, I don't know, okay. Philippe, is there also is there a, a, as a plugin that might give you some similar functionality? Not for a prompt. Yeah. There is a plugin for variables, but not for a prompt. Yeah, the only other uh, technique that a lot of customers will use is, um, uh, you know, use some of the functionality of, uh, say, the story pages to create different filters for, you know, uh, different views. But it's not the same as a prompt. Really. Okay, so let's see. Uh, there is a question which is maybe for uh, Philippe. Uh, from Yagnesh Datani. Hello, does usage tracking need enabling in OTBI? What does it cover? OTBI report usage and Fusion Apps usage as well? I will tell you, I don't know exactly. I, I, I don't know if usage tracking is on for OTBI by default. So maybe, Manisha, you happen to know that? No? I do, and the answer is okay. no. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> Uh, Thanks, yeah, <laughs> so for OTBI, it's not yet enabled. For OSC, it is. And for FAW, we are working on enabling it beyond the OSC element, so the app shell, right? So, yes, it's yeah. step by step. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have a question from Norman Liu. So, this one is on the mobile, so it will be for Reggie. Uh, can OA mobile sharing without username, password access, not only URL, maybe? Uh, you don't have an account. So basically, they want to know if you can share from your app uh, a specific dashboard to someone else without having them having a logon ID. Okay, gotcha. So um, the answer to that right now is that today you cannot, um, but we've got quite a few sweet features um, coming down the pipeline very quickly. Um, that um, if you want a bit of spoilers in this regard, if you think about some of the interactions that we have presently um, in day by day, um, a lot of that is coming um, platform wide to enable some of these other types of use cases. So intro platform sharing, and then also um, sharing out. Um, so you wouldn't be able to do that in the app today. Right now, you would need to be a user of OAC in order to you know, participate. But we've got additional um, you know, capabilities coming very shortly that are going to satisfy all those different different types of use cases. Perfect. Thank you, Brandon. Uh, I'm going to let you finish the next six questions because I have to jump on an interview with an employee. So, so thanks Definitely. for that. And thanks, everyone, for joining. Uh, Brandon is continuing. Perfect. Uh, thanks, Ben. Um, I'll pull out our next question um, for Barry from Anil Mendapara. Is there uh, any facilities to create fixed templates based on tagnated reports? on OAC's platform, like you're able to do so in BI Publisher? Well, this is quite an easy answer because you know BI Publisher remains a critical part of the OAC platform. So it's not going away, it's still part of it. So I don't see, um, at least Philippe can tell me that we're building paginated report capabilities into the OAC DV or into answers, but I would you know stick with BI Publisher in that sense of situation. Fantastic, thank you. Um, the next one for, for Brett um, from Neelish Baldi. Uh, do we have connectivity available to Microsoft SharePoint providing interactive capabilities the same within OAC? I guess there's different ways you could read that question. So I'll kind of answer both. One is, can you connect to a data, SharePoint as a data source? To name to data directly, I think uh, we have a few customers that might be exploring using it with uh, GDBC and uh, the remote data gateway. The other aspect is I have worked with customers that have embedded uh, OAC uh, project dashboards into uh, SharePoint, uh, allowing dashboard uh, you know customer users to access the data, say with Teams or SharePoint. Um, so if you want to put OAC data into SharePoint, you can you can do that. And we can talk about some embedding strategies uh, for connecting the SharePoint as a data source for something like an Excel file or a library in uh, SharePoint. That I think the only thing you can really explore right now is the JDBC approach. Fantastic. And still on the, the connection topic um, for Philippe, uh, database connection question, how can we edit database connection details in OAC DV to point new database instances uh, where we want our data sets pointing to a different database of a project? That's, this is from Shyamna. That's a, that's a cool question. Uh, there are a couple of ways that you can do this, or there are a couple of ways to interpret the question. I'll just stick to two things that come to my mind. One, 
for what I understand you're describing, I recommend using a, a semantic model, so a repository. In a repository, you can have dynamic uh, parameters to point a connection to, or a data, yeah, connection to a database or another one dynamically based on various parameters that can be uh, dynamic or manual. So that's what I think your question is about, but I also want to bring another possibility that also answers some of the template question we had earlier. You have a feature in DV that's called data set replace. So if you have projects pointing to a data set, you can easily just replace the source by another source and keep all the formatting, all the calculation, all the insights of your project intact. So that's very powerful as well. I'm not sure, hopefully I answered your question with one of these answers. Super, thank you. Um, I think this next one will be towards Reggie from Tony Willis. Is there a, a how-to on connecting the mobile application to the existing OAC environment? Yes, so essentially what needs to be done is we have a, um, a support doc that runs through the steps. You'll need your admin essentially to enable um, mobile access for your OAC environment. And we've got a doc that you know we share our customers run through and get themselves up and running in five, ten minutes. Perfect. Um, and if you have that, uh, feel free to, to share the, the link to the docs um, in that chat as well. Okay. Um, next two for, um, for Brett, first one from, from Jamie Clark is formatted export um, to Excel coming within OAC. Yeah, this is a common uh, request, especially for things like pivot tables and things where you have, say, summarized values or specific formatting. So kind of the, the way we're approaching it um, is we will, we don't have anything coming right away, but we, we have uh, some work ongoing. We'll tackle first uh, what we kind of call like a formatted table um, where a lot of the information value is. And then once we get that uh, you know, done and released, then we'll start to look at the next set of requests. We do have requests around things like uh, formatted charts and things like that. But really our focus right now is really to get that table information out since it really gives you different insight into what the data means. Awesome. Um, and a follow up from Nataraja um, Kambampati. Um, and they asked, can we have a tile plus visualization plus quick note um, essentially to as a single tile using any plugins in OAC? Um, they have seen such capabilities built by teams in analytics for applications, but um, I'm curious for the plugins for OAC and OAS. Yeah, I can tackle that. Um, is the uh, you know right now there isn't a way to kind of group together the visuals directly. Um, kind of what happens, you know, it's good to understand it in the uh, FAW experience. Those are actually all visuals created in the OAC canvas, so you can actually author those kind of things by hand. Uh, we are though investing in ways to do uh, more grouping and associate content together, so it's a little more unified. Uh, and you'll see those coming in future releases that kind of make it easier to build those kind of experiences. But I do want to clarify, you can definitely build those kind of things today by hand. Um, it's just a lot easier with FAW. So it's a good place to start. Super. Um, and then I think our last question, Salim, I'm not um, certain I fully grasp it, but um, failure of connection scripts or init block in connection pool in OAC and remote, uh, remote mode forces us. Would you care to rephrase the question or expand upon it? But otherwise, we can always follow up after the fact. Um, and I think that that concludes our our 48, some or 50 total of questions. I'm happy we were able to get them answered. And I appreciate everyone for staying on for this extra 30 minutes um, to, to talk, talk with the experts and get your questions answered. And also very much appreciative of everyone joining today's Oracle Analytics Live. So thank you. And we'll be back on next month, um, the third Friday of each month. So looking forward to seeing everyone next month. And thank you again for attending today. Bye, everybody. Bye.